Yes, uh, welcome to all of you joining in for this Cafe Talk, our third in a row of Cafe Talks in our first circle. Um, it's Robismo who is inviting you to this, uh, and it's a webinar series that we have launched because of the corona, because we had initially thought of doing this uh, physically in and study visits to different countries, but that won't be possible. So now we uh, in Rubismo, we're working with these three sectors, the food, the bio-based and the ecosystem services. And we've done uh, an, an analysis of quite a number of companies around uh, Europe to find new and innovative business models uh, for sustainable rural business, business development. Uh, today, uh, sorry, Rubismo will have uh, these cafes coming up also after Christmas. There will be three new circles uh, in January, March, uh, February and March, and you will be welcome to join them. Uh, the first uh, circle we've been dealing with is the one uh, that was named, How Can Europe Anticipate and Support Rural Innovation? We've had a discussion on innovation from a friend in Uppsala, Sweden. We've had uh, from Germany discussing new rural development opportunities. And today we have a speaker from Denmark, Karen Hamann, who is going to talk to us about new business ideas and landscapes and inspiration from, from Denmark. And uh, I think I leave the floor to you, Karen, for, for all of you who want to, uh, if you are not so used to uh, the Zoom um, tool, you can change, you can mute yourself to the left uh, and up on the right, you can also change the view if you want to change the view, seeing the speaker or seeing the participants. Karen, please, the floor is yours. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. Um, thank you very much for giving me this opportunity to present some of our work we have uh, carried out in the Robismo project. Uh, first, I'll say a few words about uh, my background. I have a background as a Master of Science in Agriculture and more than 20 years of experience in applied research looking at business development in food and agriculture and bio-based industries in a local scale, but certainly also in a European and international scale. What I would like to present to you are some new ideas about how to create dynamics in rural areas from looking at business models from new perspectives. And to put this into a more operational context, first I will address the ideas about how can we actually create change in a rural area. Then I will give you a few examples of business ideas from Denmark, and then finally draw out some findings about how can these ideas be relevant for creating rural dynamics. And when we think of the aim to say about rural dynamics, we're thinking, how can this create more opportunities, more jobs, uh, economic growth, ideas for product for producing other things or reducing resources in new ways. So creating a rural dynamics, which can actually have a benefit for a local community. So when we talk about rural entrepreneurship, we should also be aware that this appears in many different ways. And just to illustrate two very different approaches, on the one hand, we have a farmer with a big field and he's very interested in technologies and sees lots of opportunities for how technology in different forms could help him with his business. So that could lead to many different types of entrepreneurship in the new ways he would farm his field or new ways to apply technology he may even invent something. On the other side, we have a lady, she has a small garden, small plot, she's an organic farmer, and her innovations are much more related to maybe social innovation, new ways to collaborate in rural areas. And both of these examples are entrepreneurship because the point of entrepreneurship is to take an initiative and get something started. So, how could new ideas actually make a change? A starting point would be to say that we have some resources which are already available in the landscape today. And agriculture, agricultural production is by far the largest income generator in rural areas. And agricultural production in this context is widely understood. As you can see from the pictures from the Danish agricultural uh, landscape, we may find some very small, very idyllic farms with only small numbers of hectares attached. 
And such plots could be very idyllic for, for instance, productions which are based on storytelling and, and characteristics of the local area and so on. Another example are the very large livestock productions we also have in Denmark. And this example, which I show you here, may be a big pig farm. In both examples, both the large and the small farm, you see examples of how resources are currently applied in the sense of the land, how it's used, the buildings, the machinery, and also the invested money connected to these productions. This means that we are facing a situation which on the one hand is, is uh, high, heavily embedded in, the, in already existing structures, the logins, but on the other hand, if you add a few more factors, you may have a situation where you can create changes. And such new factors could be related to technology, to funding and financing, and also to looking out to find new partners. And this is how I would like to illustrate to you how it could be done. The first example of a new business idea I will show you is initiated by a large Danish retailer called Co-op. Co-op is, is a cooperative retailer. It's our second largest retail business in Denmark. And it's owned by the consumers. So these consumers are the members of the organizations. And many Danish consumers, particularly those over 40, 50, 60 years, with, with, which are affluent and interested in food, they're also very interested in local food, organic food, new, new food entrepreneurs, and so on. So Co-op realized that it's very difficult for new food companies entrepreneurs to actually get access to the retail market and having access to the market is a very big challenge for an entrepreneurial company. Therefore, co-op saw an opportunity to establish a crowdfunding platform. So on the one hand, co-op would offer the crowdfunding platform uh, financing solution, but, sorry, money for um, entrepreneurs. And on the other hand, offer entrepreneurs access to the market and access to consumers. So this is a win-win situation, which could be organized in collaboration with a crowdfunding partner providing the proper platform. And this has really taken on and is developing. It started just a few years ago with a 150,000 euro uh, funding. And I don't know the, the sums today, but it has been growing ever since. And we have, I just looked at it yesterday and we see lots of interesting opportunities, both existing companies and new companies and new ventures trying this opportunity where you can ask for maybe what is 10,000, 20,000 euros, even less, or you could ask for millions. So you can have uh, situations where you ask, uh, if you want to start trying something, I will give you a reward, a gift if you give me 1,000 Danish kroner or so. But you could also have the more professional financial situations where you invest and you pay return on investments, you pay interest. So a very, very flexible system made very easy for consumers. Just use your smartphone and then you're engaged in a crowdfunding system. This way you can actually provide market access to rural businesses in a very simple way, if we can put it simple. Another example I will share with you is a new venture we see developing in Denmark, and that is production of grass protein. Now you may think it's silly to harvest the grass and process it to make a product. But the point is, this was actually started because an actual need in the organic pig production. They need organic feed protein, and we import a lot of feed protein, organic feed protein, in the form of soy protein from China. And that's not very organic to think you need to transport feed half around the world if you can actually produce them something just outside your door. Therefore, we had developed a technology, it was particularly old university, developed this technology on how to harvest the clover grass, process it, have the juice and take out the proteins. And today we have, come, we have achieved a situation where the first farm has invested in an on-farm um, plant to do this. And we also have two companies professionally invested in setting up this as a commercial business. And this venture has taken nearly 10 years to develop from the first pioneering ideas to the first pilot platform, then a demonstration platform, and now actually commercial ventures coming into business. And this is just to say that if you can find the right methodology, you can organize your supply chain, you can learn to harvest the grass at the optimal times or the optimal machinery, do the right processing, 
most best, the best economics, et cetera, et cetera, and the timing in the market is right, then there could be an opportunity to initiate a new venture. And this is what we are seeing taking off in Denmark right now. So if we just take the example of processing grass, we are looking at a value chain where you first you, you grow the grass, you harvest the grass, you process the grass, and then you make a product which you sell. And in this case, the, the core product is a powder, a, a protein powder, which is used for compound feed. So with a very, let's say, simple value chain from farm to process to feed company, we could actually restructure this in different ways to create new opportunities for business. You could say that the farmer could grow the grass on contract and be paid according to the protein content. That is the same system you see in the dairy, um, dairy industry where the farmers are paid according to milk and fat content. You could also say that the farmer simply harvests the feed, sort of harvest the grass, deliver it to the biorefinery, and he has the feed, the fiber fraction, which is not used at the biorefinery return and use that as food for his cattle and then he will have a, pay, a payment on top of that. That gives some challenges, and so that's still an open question. You could also say we could uh, structure the value chain in a different way, so the biorefining process does not only take place at a central biorefinery, but the first processing takes place on the farm, so the far farmer would actually press the grass, and create the juice, and deliver the juice as the product to the biorefinery. This could also be done where there are some logistical challenges and quality challenges related to this. Another approach to look at this from a business model perspective is to say, we could also harvest the grass and sell the grass for marginal land, sell that off to a biorefining estate. And this way, grass processing becomes a business opportunity for government, which are large landowners, or for real estate owners, which have open lands. So the point is to say, even if you have a quite simple value chain, grass process harvest product, you can restructure this and see this in a different perspective, which creates different business opportunities for you. And as this is, these examples illustrate, it also gives you an opportunity to bring in technology, different steps of the value chain, as well as bringing in new partners. So, to sum up, how are these examples relevant for the rural dynamics? The examples I showed you has a very essential feature, and that is they link the farmers to the market or to financing. And access to market and access to financing are two fundamentals for developing a business. And this is what these two examples actually contribute to. It's also very clear that we must not overlook how technology, in fact, is a very serious enabler for rural dynamics. And technology, in the way I showed you here, both relates to communication and making a platform, uh, the crowdfunding platform work, but also the technology developed for processing the grass. We also develop specific machinery for harvesting without having too much sand in the grass because that deteriorates the quality of the protein. So technology could be big steps forward, like new biorefining technology, but also, let me say, in smaller steps forward, improving existing machinery. But technology does open up new markets, because if we had not had this technology for the grass biorefining, we would not be able to maybe improve our bio bioenergy system, we would not be able to process the side streams from the grass, we would not be able to have this very good yield from the protein production, which actually is in a state today where it is competitive in price and quality to organic soy protein. That is quite an achievement. It is also fair to say that because of these two new examples, businesses may also find new ways to generate revenues in rural areas. So the example I showed you with the grass protein illustrates quite well how you can see the opportunities for generating revenues in more perspectives than just harvest, sell your crop and do something. But you can include new partners, find new way to restructure your value chain and see the opportunities there. An important issue which is relevant for rural dynamics is also to link the rural to the urban areas 
And these two examples illustrate how this could be done. The crowdfunding platform is a very direct approach where consumers can exactly see what am I, what kind of company am I invested in? What kind of product? What is happening? What is interesting? And these investors are very often based in urban areas. The distance between the farm and the urban area is longer for the uh, grass protein, but you could say that the grass protein is also an international value chain. The point here is to say the grass protein is used for Danish organic pig production, and these pigs are exported and maybe end up on dinner tables in Australia. I know you think it sounds silly, but we do have exports of organic pigs to Australia and New Zealand. So in the, my final words would be to say that the examples I have showed you illustrates that even if we have some structures and some logins in the rural areas today, if you add more factors and see how to use these different structural factors like land building, funding technologies and skills in new ways, it creates a lot of opportunities. And think also of working with new partners to create new business opportunities. I will leave it at that. And if you have any questions, I will try to answer. Thank you very much.